Hello and welcome to another edition of Chili Vision. This time we're getting on our bike. The name Milk Race might not mean much these days, but if you've heard of the Tour of Britain cycle race, you'll know what it is. The Milk Race was a sponsorship by the Milk Marketing Board of the Tour of Britain cycle race, starting in 1958 and lasting all the way through until 1993. In 1987, Mastertronic decided to release a game that was tied in with the Milk Race, and it was programmed by Icon Design, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. There's plenty of racing games on computers, of course, and also motorbike games, but I can't think of many cycling games. So Milk Race was a bit of a novelty, even back in 1987 when I first came across it on the Amstrad CPC. And I'm going to start on the CPC because this is one of the games I bought from my news agent for 199 back in 1987. Nice bit of suspense music here. And a very nice map of the UK. There's 13 stages in all, not including the qualifying stage that we're starting on here. What you have to do is race along on the road, changing your gears. You don't, on the Amstrad version, pull left or right to move your cycle. It's purely down to the gears. When milk bottles go past, you collect them to boost your energy, and you can see the energy bar there. Your energy depletes depending on how well you use the gears. So you want to be in a nice you know, 12th gear or something like that when you're going downhill as we are now, and a lower gear when you're going uphill. And when you're going down or in the right gear, your energy also slightly replenishes, which is useful. One of the things about the game, and you'll notice it already here, and I've, I'm just pulling away from the edge of the screen, is when you're going very fast, you end up jammed right against the screen's edge, which makes it impossible to see what's coming up ahead of you. And it's really, really difficult. So you can't see where the milk is that you need to pick up to boost your energy, and you can't see where potholes or other cyclists are. So that can be quite annoying. I'm not going to dwell on the CPC version too long. I'm going to move across the spectrum because this game is actually quite similar across all formats, certainly in the terms of gameplay. We've got the mapping on the specy here and a beeper tune playing here in the background. Quite nice. See all the stages outlined again. So we start the game. And the specy version gets off to an incredibly fast start. Much quicker, as you'd expect on the specy. Everything whizzes past. Exactly the same mechanics as on the Amstrad version. The speed does make it a little bit of a problem in terms of trying to predict what's coming up when you're going fast. So you have to react really, really fast. Just really knocked off my bike there and I get... Car goes past and I'm off again, climbing uphill. Got to beat the clock on this first qualifying stage. I'm in position 41. You get a much more of a sense of the uphill and downhill here on the spectrum as well, and it's depicted in the curves in the road. So I've qualified. It doesn't say I've gone on to the next stage or not. It just does that countdown, and off we go. On the Amstrad version, it actually stops you at the end of each stage, and you, you start afresh. But on the Speccy, you just continue on. Controls are very responsive, best played on the joystick, I find. We're weaving away among the cyclists here. And yeah, it's, it's quite a good version. There's no advantage to following other cyclists as there would be in real life. You can't slipstream them or ride in a peloton. In the, the, you, you just literally race. On to the MSX, which is our first time on the MSX, in fact, using my brand new Sony Hitbit. One of the things about this, unfortunately, we're on composite because I haven't got the RGB capture working yet on the MSX. But never mind, got a nice loading screen here. Similar menu to the other versions. 
the A wide chip in the MSX means you've got the same tunes as the Amstrad version. And in fact, we've got pretty much the same graphics as the Spectrum version here. So it's a little bit of a hybrid, but it is slower and slightly less responsive than the Spectrum version. On this version, you've got to pull right to uh, start moving the bike. I'm just getting slightly confused by the controls here because it's just slightly different coming over from the Spectrum Amstrad version. And the scrolling is quite jerky. As you see, those milk bottles literally go past about, what, eight pixels at a time, I imagine. It's really jerky. That said, you don't, as long as you're not putting it directly against the Spectrum Amstrad versions, you don't notice as much once you start to play it. Putting the MSX version against the other versions is a little bit unforgiving. Gameplay, it's exactly the same. Icon Design has done a good job here of keeping consistency among the first three formats that we've seen here. So we're across now to the Commodore 64, and this looks very different. These big blocky cyclist sprites. You can see the difference on this version between yourself and the other players, which is nice because on the MSX Spectral and Amstrad, it's incredible, well, it's nearly impossible unless you're actually playing the game to tell which player sprite you actually are. Um, when you're actually playing it, of course, you can w move the joystick and see which one you are, but I imagine watching this video, it's going to be quite diff difficult. But on the 64, you're the, you've got the white jersey, and we've completed stage one there, and it's quite easy to tell everybody apart. See, 64 version does zip along. It's not quite as playable as the other versions, it has to be said. It's quite easy to be hit by other cyclists approaching from you from behind like that because they really do zip past, especially if you're not going at any particular speed at the time. And there you go, that's the second time in a row I've been run over and I weren't, wasn't able to get out of the way at all because these cyclists go, oh, again, you can't, <laughs> it's just impossible. It's absolutely impossible to keep out of the way when you're getting up to speed after an accident. Picked up some milk there. Once you're at speed, is absolutely fine, but it's just a little bit unforgiving. I've got to say, on the, all of these versions, the Amstrad version is incredibly easy. You can complete it after your second or third go. It's just a question of mastering the game. On the Commodore 64, however, as soon as you fall off, you get run over by cars. I mean, what are all these cars doing driving around on the circuit anyway? It's, it's a little bit unforgiving. Not a bad game, it's just coming over from the other versions, it's, it's just slightly harsh. Moving over to the Atari 8-bit and get this wonderful rainbow effect as you come onto the menu here. Again, you can't tell your cyclist apart here from the, all the other ones. Um, it's incredibly difficult, so now I'm moving around there, so that's me at the front there. But it's, you know, come on lads, a little bit more splash of colour here, just so at least I can tell myself apart. Usual problem of when you're going as fast as you can, you're parked right up against the edge of the screen so you can't see what's coming. On the other versions, you can hit the edge of the road and you'll come off. On the Atari version, actually, you can just go pull the joystick to the extreme up or down and you won't go off the road. But on this version as well, the milk is scattered in the road. And as you've seen on some of the other versions, that it's actually always on the top or bottom of the road. Decent rendition of the theme here on the Atari. It's not a bad game at all. Again, what's, what, what are cars doing in the middle of a cycle race? Has someone just wandered in on their 1980s Toyota there with the big spoiler on the back? Dunno. It's like bland palette choices here, but, you know, can't complain too much. It, it plays pretty well. It plays... Probably as well as the Spectrum version, not quite as well as the Amstrad. Certainly better than the Commodore 64. So which version of Milk Race to choose? Well, I'm slightly biased because I started off on the Amstrad version back in 1987. But I have to say, it probably is the best version. It has nice graphics, decent difficulty level, although, as I say, two or three goes in, you're probably going to complete it. It's just a question of patience. 
at least you don't have the problems of things zipping up behind you so much because the game isn't quite as fast as some of the other versions. Spectrum version's okay, quite a nice speed to it, looks a little bit bland, perhaps going to have a little bit more presentation in there. The MSX version, yeah, it's a slightly curious hybrid of the Amstrad and Spectrum versions, taking, okay, then admitted nice music from the Amstrad version, mixing it with the Spectrum visuals, but with that slightly dodgy scrolling, so it doesn't have the smoothness of the Spectrum version, or, or quite that speed which is a bit of a shame because the MSX actually could do a slightly better job there, especially if they're making better use of things like the hardware sprites. Commodore 64, the more I think about it, the more I verge on saying I don't like it as much as the other versions. It's just, it's just unforgiving. And those slightly ugly, blocky sprites, which are, there's no need for that. The Commodore 64 can do a better job than that. The Atari version, yeah, it's okay actually on the Atari. Could look a little bit better, has a nice tune, plays quite well. Icon Design have done a fairly decent job here. It's a fairly consistent game on all the systems. Yeah, okay, it's not the best game in the world. It's incredibly repetitive because once you master it, you can just cycle along all day and you're going to win the game, especially on the Amstrad version. And once you've seen a couple of levels, there's no surprises in there at all and it doesn't really get that much harder. But it is consistent, as I say, across all those systems. But it's unusual in an era where on one system you might get a really good version, then another version you might get a mediocre version, and on a third system you might get something in between. So from that point of view, Milk Race is worth checking out.